our friends. Info war is going stronger than ever and uh, liberal and educated people, both uh, online and offline, are like, stop cancelling Russian culture, no, Dostoevsky, no, Tolstoy. So let's talk about this. On April 3rd, 2022, uh, world media started releasing materials regarding the Bucha massacre a small city in Kyiv region that was occupied by Russian military forces in March 2022. Hundreds of corpses in mass graves, torture basements, mutilated burned bodies of families, civilian cars with drivers still inside crushed by Russian tanks. All of these atrocities were committed by messengers of Russian culture, undoubted lovers of Tolstoy and Dostoevsky and uh, Russian ballet. Some people are convinced that we should separate art from the artist, and I'm not one of those people. Another opinion is that uh, artists are not responsible for the actions of their followers, and I oppose this statement as well. Today I will be looking at two pillars of Russian culture, and uh, I will be judging them from two perspectives. Tolstoy as a person, but not as a writer, and Dostoevsky as a writer, but not as a person. Let's start with Tolstoy, the greatest writer of all times, creator of war and peace, or should I call it... Tolstoy is mostly known as an anarchist and oppositionist of the Russian monarchism. What is maybe not so known is that this liberal pacifist genius served in the army during the Crimean War in the mid of 19th century. Here it says, he took part in campaigns against the native peoples and soon after in the Crimean War 1853-1856. I'll also quote BBC. He first served as an artillery officer in the Caucasus in various campaigns to assert Russian imperial rule in the region. He later fought at the siege of Sevastopol during the Crimean War and was promoted to lieutenant for outstanding bravery and courage. Despite appreciating the heightened emotions of battle, he knew a military career was not for him and he resigned his commission soon afterwards. He retained a lifelong fascination for the motivations of military life. Let that sink in. This majestic pacifist retained a lifelong fascination for motivations of military life after serving in artillery forces. I'll skip the part where he owned serfs, uh, which of one he had a child with, or joined the army because of debts or how toxic, to put it mildly, he was in his marriage. All of that makes an excellent example to follow and a great nominee for Nobel Peace Prize. But what about Dostoevsky, another literary genius, investigator and representative of the mysterious Russian soul? Mostly famous, he is for his novel Crime and Punishment, published in 1866. Narrative of the story goes like this. A young guy named Raskolnikov kills an old lady who is an owner of a sort of pawn shop. And then for the whole timeline of the story, he tries to justify himself to his family, his friends and his lover and make up his mind whether he had the right to commit this murder or not. I'll use the translation made by Constance Garnett and uh, read a passage from part 5, chapter 4, page 524. This passage uh, contains a quote which then had become the cornerstone of the mysterious Russian soul. I simply did it. I did the murder for myself, for myself alone. And whether I became a benefactor to others or spent my life like a spider catching men in my web and sucking the life out of men, I couldn't have cared at that moment. And it was not the money I wanted, Sonia, when I did it. It was not so much the money I wanted, but something else. I know it all now, understand me. Perhaps I should have never committed a murder again. I wanted to find out something else. It was something else led me on. I wanted to find out then and quickly whether I was a louse like everybody else or a man, whether I can step over barriers or not, whether I dare stoop to pick up or not, whether I am a trembling creature or whether I have the right. Guess the quote that had become so famous now. Let me help you. It's this one. 
whether I am a trembling creature or whether I have the right. I read Crime and Punishment long before Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022, so I'd say my opinion on it isn't biased, at least in the light of recent events. And the impression I was under, to put it shortly, reading this novel made me feel like I'm slowly drowning in some uh, nasty, gloomy, suffocating jello. If this is the message that Dostoevsky aimed to transmit, this overwhelming feeling of despair and filth, then yeah, kudos to him. His main character is kind of a spineless coward trying to justify his uh, deadly actions to everybody, including himself, throughout the whole story. Okay, people have always liked detective stories and novels about serial killers and murderers. People fall for shows like Hannibal and Dexter because their serial killers are dangerous yet charismatic. Dostoevsky wrote an entire novel advocating a person who firstly maliciously killed for his benefits and after that started crouching and creeping like a trembling creature for the whole timeline of the story. Is this the embodiment of the mysterious Russian soul? It is. Yes, it is. Russian culture births and nourishes countless Raskolnikovs, citizens of Putin who are innocent and anti-war. One of the most noticeable recent examples for me is the victim of Moscovian regime poisoned and imprisoned oppositionist Alexei Navalny, who isn't as liberal as people want him to see. Check this out, uh, Navalny discussing his opinions on Crimea in 2014 with Alexei Venediktov, editor-in-chief of the so-called independent radio station Echo Moskva. Если вы станете президентом, вы попробуете вернуть Крым Украине? Крым это что бутерброд с колбасой, чтобы вот туда сюда возвращать? Оказалось, что да. Вот я не считаю. Украинцам я сильно советую не обманывать тоже себя. Он останется частью России и больше никогда в обозримом будущем не станет частью Украины. If this is the open statement of a martyr of Putin's regime, do you really think that there is somebody in this neo-fascist empire who would mind if uh, Crimean annexation ended? In my previous video, I used the statistics that show that 71% of those swamp creatures support Putin as their leader. Over the course of March 2022, this number has risen to over 80% who are in favor of Putin and his actions. This data comes from Levada Center, a so-called independent, uh, non-governmental, sociological research and uh, polling organization. Another thing is how Russian culture promotes looting of Ukrainian homes and stores. There are countless CCTV and personal videos showing how Russians are looting Ukrainian homes and various stores. Смотрите, как укропы живут, блядь. Ну, ты, лочка, блядь. Да раз, и ладно. Our security services managed to wiretap some of the conversations uh, Russian soldiers are having with their friends and family members back in Russian Federation. Восемьдесят тысяч гривен у меня есть. По нашему это двести сорок тысяч чем-то, короче. Нифига себе. Ты что, у кого тут вообще по миллионам? В смысле? 
кто-то приедет mm -hmm. за мой ипотеку закроет, говорит. Надо тоже нормально денег поискать. This is the way that Russians fight in a war, any war, by terrorizing, kidnapping, torturing, raping, murdering, burning everything to the ground. They have broken each and every law of war, not just in Ukraine. I'd like to remind you that Russians were bombing Syrian hospitals, refugee camps, civilian facilities, and their air forces are responsible for deaths of over 20,000 civilians since their invasion of Syria in 2015. When Syrian air forces dropped serene bombs on Han Shaihun in 2017, Russian authorities did what they could do best. They stated, it's not us. Syrian government aimed to hit a warehouse with ammunition and after all it was all staged. Mysterious Russian soul is nothing more than a pile of imperialistic shit they are all full of. Muscovians have been invading and stealing lands since the dawn of their existence. Soviet Union occupied 15 countries in Eastern Europe and Asia and highly influenced the politics of the East Germany. Just in the last 30 years, among other crimes, the Russians invaded and annexed such territories as Transnistria and Moldova, Chechnya and the Caucasus region, Abkhazia and South Ossetia in Georgia, and Crimea and Donbass regions in Ukraine. This is their culture. This is their contribution to world heritage. Terror, forced deportations, war crimes, mass murders, and statements that go like it's not us, they are killing themselves. We are just the uh, peacemakers and liberators. Look at their liberation. Look at the peace they induced on over 11 millions of Ukrainians, 7 million of which had to flee inside the country from the east to the more peaceful west, and over 4 million people became refugees in other countries. I have a dream. A dream where each and every Russian expat and lover of Russian country is deported back to their beloved Russian Nazi Federation and each and every Russian citizen is prohibited to cross any border of any country across the globe so they can choke down on Dostoevsky and Tolstoy until the end of times. Amen. Slava Ukraini, Slava Nazi and peace to the Russian Federation.